A controversial ban on religious symbols in Quebec's public sector has barely been law for 24 hours, and it's already facing a legal challenge. Two groups announced today they'll be fighting Bill 21 in court, arguing it violates the Constitution. So what's the case they'll be making? Mustafa Farouk is the executive director of the National Council of Canadian Muslims. He joins me now from Montreal. Hi, Mr. Farouk. Nice to see you. Thanks for your time. Thank you, Vashi. So as we mentioned, your organization is launching a joint court challenge to have Bill 21 stayed, arguing that it's unconstitutional. Can you tell me exactly why you think that? So we, along with our partners, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, uh, you know, join with our allies in noting that this bill that was passed late last night uh, is unconstitutional. Uh, it divides us and its passage is a dark day for not just Quebec, but for all Canadians who believe in equal uh, rights for all, and who believe in civil liberties, and who believe in our democratic process. It's a really sad day. We had a representative from the Quebec government on a little bit earlier on the show. His name's Christopher Skeet. And he said that secularism, and he defined that as treating everyone the same, could be nothing but a good thing. Your response? So I think that when you really want to uh, treat everyone the same, uh, I mean, in, in principle, that's a beautiful principle. Uh, but we know that a neutral state doesn't discriminate. And what the Quebec government is doing is inserting themselves as the arbiter of what's appropriate and what's not uh, by coming and saying that, uh, you know, when, when, when we have to make a, uh, a Sikh man who wears a turban not accepted in the workplace, when we're saying that a Jewish man who wears a kippah is not accepted in the workplace, that's not a state... Uh, that is making sure that it's standing up for the rights of all Quebecers. That's not a state that's treating everyone the same. That's a treat that's stating folks, ordinary folks, trying to live their lives, trying to be good human beings. That's, that's the opposite of that. They say that they have a mandate to, to, to introduce this bill, to pass this bill, that they campaigned on it, and they want a majority, uh, a majority in the election. What do you think of that? Well, I think that we have to note that we have a constitution for a reason. We have a constitution for the reason that uh, government, uh, you know, cannot pass legislation uh, that impugns on uh, what is most dear to our constitution, uh, to protect all Canadians, uh, to protect their rights, and to protect them from unjustified government interference. Uh, and um, it's, it's also worthwhile to note um, that this government, uh, you know, with, with all the talk about mandate, didn't really engage in significant consultation. In fact, of all the affected groups, it really only talked to two religious uh, communities. Uh, you know, and, and, and in a very minuscule way, did it engage in consultation. And, and as well with the with the gag order, the Bénin order, uh, it rushed this entire uh, act through the process, essentially shutting off the potential for debate, even introducing late night, last minute amendments. Mm -hmm. So just to show you how poorly thought through. Uh, this act uh, has been up to this point. What about from a federal perspective? Do you think there's a role for either the federal government or as we head into an election, the other two main parties to promise or, or actually do some kind of action beyond criticizing the spirit of the bill or the intention of the bill? Do you expect to see some sort of action from federal, the federal government? And if so, what might that be? Well, the legal action we, is obviously in the prerogative of the federal government. But what we can say is that we are calling on the prime minister to clearly continue to condemn uh, Bill 21 and to also, uh, we're also calling on uh, his, uh, his counterparts, uh, Andrew Scheer and Jagmeet Singh, to uh, also come out and clearly condemn Bill 21. Uh, it's important to note uh, that leadership starts from the top and all Canadians deserve to feel uh, that they are welcome in Canada, that their Canada belongs to them, because we know that to be true. Uh, we have our country is one and our province is built on one that respects diversity. And if there is a province that exemplifies that, it's Quebec, uh, with its emphasis on language rights, with its emphasis on a particular kind of society. Uh, that's why it's so important for us to uh, stand up against Bill 21 and that's why, uh, in part, we filed our legal challenge today. You mentioned those last-minute amendments, and they were largely centered on enforcement of the bill. They introduced sort of a, a system by, by which, which was very different than what the government had initially said would, would enforce 
what the bill details. And it's, it's a person that will be, you know, within the workplace. Uh, Mr. Skeet said that this person would essentially be able to say, hey, you're, you shouldn't be wearing this, take it off. Are you convinced that that's all that person will be doing? Well, I mean, I think that when most people go to their work, uh, I don't think that they hope that their colleagues will be, you know, snitching on what they're wearing that day. Uh, I don't think that's the kind of workplace that most Canadians and most Quebecers want to go to. Um, I think it's, you know, it shows you that when you introduce something that you know is unconstitutional, that you know breaches the civil liberties of Canadians, it just shows how far that can go. And that's why it's so critical uh, that, uh, and, and we're so happy to be uh, working with the CCLA, the Canadian Civil Liberties Association, to be bringing this challenge. And we're not just bringing this challenge just on behalf of our two organizations or just on behalf of one plaintiff. We're here on behalf of all Canadians, on behalf of all Quebecers who stand up for civil liberties, who stand up against a government that wants to run roughshod over their rights uh, and just sort of trample over uh, the civil liberties of Canadians on a mere set of uh, quite you know, poorly thought out talking points. Okay, I'll leave it there. Thank you very much, Mr. Farouk. Appreciate your time. Thank you. That's Mustafa Farouk, Executive Director of the National Council of Canadian Muslims.